Education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. Somebody told me one time that consonants and dissonance don't exist. Now, this person had a university degree in music. Consonance is usually described as pleasant sounds, where dissonance is described as unpleasant. This person's argument was that these things are learned. Depending on where you grow up, certain sounds that are unpleasant in one place might be pleasant elsewhere. So maybe unpleasant and pleasant are the wrong words. But something's going on. In the last video, we discovered that randomly picking notes on a string will create sounds that do not blend very well. Whereas, when we divided the string up with simple ratios, the notes blended better. So what do we mean by blending? How do we experience consonant and dissonant sounds differently? This is your brain on ratios. You may have heard of this trick before, like how animation works, or this video. Your brain is getting fooled. It's being shown a series of still images back to back, and you can find the point, the little flip in your brain where it goes from image, image, image to something smooth. This is somewhere around 20 frames per second. Well, the same thing happens with sound. Here is the sound of a bass drum. Now let's speed it up. Just like vision, it is around 20 beats per second where our brain stops trying to count individual clicks and just looks for the solid stream. But let's try some ratios. We've gotten some very interesting results playing with a 3 to 2 ratio. First, we used it to build a polyrhythm using the phrase, it's taco time, it's taco time, it's taco time. And then we used a 3 to 2 ratio to divide up a string and we found a perfect fifth harmony. Let's play the clicks on here. There's our three to two polyrhythm. It's taco time. Now let's speed it up. So when we speed up a three to two polyrhythm, it creates the perfect fifth harmony. We also played with the 4 to 3 ratio. First making a polyrhythm, pass the crispy tuckle, pass the crispy tuckle. And on the string, a 4 to 3 ratio helped us find the perfect fourth harmony. Try our experiment again. Pass the crispy tuckle, pass the crispy tuckle. Let's speed this one up. It makes a perfect fourth interval. So what this shows us is that any harmony between two notes is really super fast polyrhythm. Rhythm of the harmonies. Harmonic rhythms. Now I wish there was some kind of toy I could use to listen to the rhythm of all the intervals. Found one. So there are these instruments called samplers and they deserve their own episode. We'll get to that another time. There's a software sampler in a program called GarageBand which is a great piece of recording software that you can get on a computer or an iPad. So I'm going to bring up GarageBand. New. First thing it lets you do is select your instruments. So I'm going to go ahead and select Sampler here on the keyboard section. So it brings up this screen which has a keyboard and a waveform up in the middle here. Preloaded with a dog barking. But I also have this big record button. I can go, hello. Hello, 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 hello. So it took the recording of my voice and it changes the speed of the recording based on the ratios that we discovered last week. When it plays the sound at an octave, we know it's doubling the speed. Hello. hello. Or cutting it in half to get an octave lower. Hello. To get this perfect fifth, it is playing these two hello. at a three to two ratio. But this also works with rhythm. If I press record, now I can press this button that says loop. 
press sustain, and it plays us a steady pulse. I can click sustain to make it go away. So it's going to take this chunk of time and it's going to play back the sounds at the ratios. Let's look at the octave for a second. So playing three octaves together gives us a rhythm that should feel very familiar. Boots and cats and boots and cats and... It is the most famous pop rhythm around, and it is an octave harmony. So if I play a perfect fifth interval on here between C and G, what polyrhythm am I going to get? It's taco time, it's taco time. This is our three to two. Let's do a perfect fourth. Pass the crispy taco. Here's some more harmonic rhythms. Major third. Minor third. Major sixth. Minor sixth. But what is the rhythm of a major chord? It's pretty complex, but the pattern is definitely noticeable. Speed it up a little bit. So, so far these are all what would be considered consonant harmonies. But let's try a dissonant harmonic rhythm. What about two notes right next to each other, what we call a minor second? So when this is happening super fast in our brain, it takes a while to figure out the pattern. Let's try another super dissonant interval called the tritone. We can go from a B to an F. Now a tritone is right between the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth. And when I listen to the harmonic rhythm of the tritone, at first it sounded like our three to two polyrhythm, and then it sounded like our four to three polyrhythm, and it kind of shifted back and forth. Again, this is very complex, so our brain has to work quite hard. And ultimately, that's the difference between consonants and dissonance. It's not good sounds versus bad sounds, or pleasant versus unpleasant. It's how hard is my brain going to have to work to understand this pattern? Simple versus complex. Sometimes I have the energy for some complexity, and sometimes I need to keep it simple. And we figured this all out by applying a little bit of math. So whether you like math or not, it's a very powerful tool. And it might be worth putting some time into building your mathematical mind. Until next time, happy exploring. Meow. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.